true or false? I'll put you on the spot with a question. Next quarter, do we see more growth in line with what we're doing now? Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking into our Trade to Black podcast as usual. I'm your host, Shad Dales. And again, today, we're talking with some big time people about cannabis. Cannabis, midterm elections. It's coming up this week. Big news, to say the least. Are you following it closely? What are you hoping to see? Are we going to see a sea of red? Will cannabis benefit from that? Who knows? But we want to learn more, so leave your feedback below. Leave a comment. Ask any questions. We'll reach out to our thought leaders, and we'll give you back the information that you want to know. As well, click on that bell for notifications, and make sure, obviously, to film, or excuse me, share this video to all of your network. Okay, let's welcome in once again back to the podcast. She is the CFO of Marymed. Susan Valer joins us once again. Good to see you. And uh, I'm sure it's a very, very busy time for you. Yes, it's very busy for us. It's been a great busy quarter and we're gearing up for our big fourth quarter. So a lot of activity here at corporate today. Yeah, last time we had you on, we wanted to get to a little, get to know you more, uh, what your role is with the company. Uh, you had your latest earnings that came out Q3. Um, what's it like this time of year for you? You know, getting uh, situated within the industry. This seems to be a big time of year for the cannabis industry. Are you finding? Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of stuff that we announced this past quarter that we're gearing up operationally. A lot of real estate stuff that John's been working on for our you know, expansion of existing states that we're in. So generally we're, you know, gearing up to have our plan hopefully done by early December. Um, So yeah, Yeah. it's shaping up to be a very strong Q3 and heading into Q4, we think will be, you know, continued positive momentum. What investors want to hear, I would think. Uh, So let's dive into this. You just announced earnings results, which were in line with expectations with full year guidance down slightly due to regular regulatory delays. Uh, Some of the details and highlights you posted another quarter of positive net income along with growth margins rebounding in tough uh, industry conditions, to say the least. So overall, uh, I have to ask the question from a 40,000 foot view. Are you pleased with how the company performed in Q3? Oh, absolutely. We were actually delighted with our our last quarter's results. Um, We saw revenue. um, It increased 3% versus last quarter and 2% versus last year. Um, And most importantly, we had our 11th quarter consecutive of positive adjusted EBITDA. And so I look back a year ago and last year, their EBITDA was $8.6 million. This past quarter, we reported $12.6 million just a year later. Um, We did have some gross margin that we said was going to be improving this past quarter. So we were delighted that our margins went up sequentially, 200 basis points. And we were at 48%, which was great news. Um, And this is despite all the inflation that's going on that people are saying is at record Mm -hmm. level. And, you know, a lot of people are asking, you know, how is it the bottom of the um, the pricing? What do you think is going to happen? And and we're just focused on selling cannabis, doing our best with the amazing brands behind me. You can see we had a new uh, launch of Betty's that has been positively received that has all sorts of new effects um, for uh, consumers. So great feedback so far. And they're starting to roll out to all the dispensaries we did do a soft launch in our, our dispensary here in Massachusetts. And the feedback we've gotten has been great. Wow. So what do you credit, I guess, a lot of the growth towards, you know, is it just consistency, would you say? Um, Yeah, I mean, I think we just don't waste a lot of time worrying about the things that we can't control. We focus on having really strong products and, you know, having great experiences for our customers at dispensaries and, you know, hiring really talented individuals. So that has served us well, I think, this past quarter, um, you know, to continue to outperform the market for sure. So true or false, I'll put you on the spot with a question. Next quarter, do we see more growth in line with what we're doing now? What's your take on it all? Yeah, I mean, I think the momentum we have, we're geared up for a very strong fourth quarter. We've got a fair bit of, uh, you know, products that are coming into the market. And we have a, you know, a talented sales team that's very motivated. Uh, Last week, we had a big call on all the different promotions that we're doing for November, December, Thanksgiving, Christmas are big uh, holidays that people do actually buy lots of uh, stuff for, you know, people that they uh, enjoy sharing uh, cannabis with. And so we are proud that we have a lot of good products that will, I think, um, appeal to all different, you know, age brackets, et cetera. So what are some highlights that you can share between now and next quarters as far as monumental dates? We got to look at Black Friday. What are you anticipating for the holiday season? Like, what can you share based off of that? 
Yeah, I mean, typically I have, this is my first holiday season here at Merrimed, but they do do a lot of stuff around Thanksgiving. The local dispensary here, we're doing a big food drive. So as you bring stuff in, you get points and dollars. Um, there will be some Black Friday specials. We do the 12 days at Christmas. Um, so currently we have, you know, the four dispensaries in Illinois, one in Massachusetts, and then Annapolis just opened a few weeks ago. Yeah. So they have a big um, program and we have a very, very strong rewards program that people are signing up and they're going to get, you know, involved with a lot of these specials that are coming online um, starting even as early as this weekend. So I know you'd mentioned that you don't really focus on pricing and the headwinds it's faced in the past, but I do have to ask the question, do you think, or has there been much talk amongst the management within the company that you think that the industries uh, basically facing are, are near a bottom now and we are on the way up? Or has there been much conversation internally about that? Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been unusual because we looked at our wholesale business and sequentially we were up a million dollars quarter over quarter. Um, and then retail, while we saw a drop in the average ticket price, we were actually up in absolute dollars, a half a million dollars quarter over quarter. Um, so I think mass has somewhat stabilized, at least for us. It is down year over year, but we think it is going to stay at kind of these rates that we're yeah. seeing right now. Yeah. Um, Maryland, I think, has stabilized a bit, but the compression just started last quarter. So, you know, we are um, noticing that and we are pricing accordingly, but we are not, I think, experiencing the pressure that some of the other folks and Illinois has remained, you know, a very stable market for us. So we have not really seen any price compression whatsoever in Illinois to date, knock on wood. So you do see gross margins and price uh, power stabilizing around here is what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, again, we did a 48% gross margin depending on the mix and kind of specials we do. We are targeting to be above that 50% mark, um, you know, long term. So that is what we're focused on. And, um, you know, we've done a lot of operational efficiencies. We have new LED lights in Massachusetts. We're doing our first time a, a two-tier grow room, starting out with one. Um, but yeah, a lot of those things that we're looking at so that we continue to have, you know, the best products, but, you know, at good margins. When you talk about LED lights, new LED lights, care to emphasize or like elaborate on that as to why that's important for investors to know? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a much more efficient growing. So we're able actually to increase. They just put them in four months ago and the yield is up almost 30%. Um, so we have a lot of cannabis that's coming online. So I was meeting with Tim who runs all of our operations and he was delighted um, with the results that we're seeing. And then I was like, huh, is electricity down? And it was actually down, um, you know, versus the past quarter. So it's, you know, higher yields and, and better efficiency. So it's all it's, good. Yeah, that's great. Um, this week, it is election time and a big, uh, big day, big week for the state of Maryland. Uh, voters are, uh, they will actually decide whether legalize, uh, uh, legalize adult use cannabis. Uh, first off, how's the vibe, you know, around the office leading into the election? And I know we always say we're not focusing on that, but come on, you can share with me that there's probably a lot of focus and anticipation and, uh, probably some hope that, uh, indeed the state does, uh, legalize adult use cannabis, correct? Yeah, I mean, we had the big, um, ribbon cutting ceremony. So a bunch of the management team went down to Annapolis. Yeah. And the word that I heard from, you know, I think there was over a half a dozen was they believe that the adult use will pass. Um, you know, there's always off chance that it doesn't. Um, how quickly, if it does pass, will that impact us? I, right. I did look back and I saw medical pass in 2014 and the first dispensary didn't open until July of 2017. Um, I think they're a little bit more thoughtful. So we are hopeful that, you know, when it does pass, it will not take that long. Um, but I think the vibe of everyone here at Merrimed is they do believe this state will pass. So we shall see this week. Well, as they say in this industry, one month equals one year for a lot of other <laughs> industries. So I think 2014 yeah. and 2017, as much as it was around the corner, uh, times have changed a lot. So you do not think in the event that they do this, things will move quickly? Yeah, I mean, I think we're hopeful by the end of next year that we'll be kind of gearing up. And the word we've, we're hearing, again, we don't know for sure, is that, you know, if you have a medical dispensary, they'll allow you to also sell adult use. Um, and then, you know, the stats are showing last year medical sales are about 550 million. Um, the population has 6.2 million and about yeah. 150,000 patients. So, you know, this state does like cannabis. So we do feel that when it's passed, if it's passed, it will be, you know, a tremendous upside for us. Susan, and we are, 
Yeah, so and we are you, looking at a bunch of um, you know opportunities in Maryland to expand from our one existing dispensary we have today. Yeah, I was going to say, Susan, this country likes cannabis. It's credible <laughs> as to how much we're seeing a growth trajectory of cannabis versus uh, alcohol. It's um, it just really does feel like it's become mainstream and it's only growth opportunities from here, don't you think? I do. I haven't really been tracking the, the alcohol, but a lot of people have been telling me that they oh. are, are seeing a lot more compression than um, cannabis for sure. Yeah, there were some staggering numbers with uh, alcohol consumption amongst the uh, university crowd, which probably should be going to school. But let's face it, I probably was doing the exact same thing at that age. But Well, they probably regard- have a limited wallet, too. If they had to pick between alcohol and cannabis and it's legal, then, you know, yeah. I think a lot of them are picking cannabis, to be perfectly honest. Exactly. So, as I said, you're vertically integrated in Maryland uh, with a very large cultivation and processing facility and dispensary. So, um, can you maybe share just a little bit uh, as to what kind of impact you think we'll have if everything goes accordingly in the election this week? Uh, in Maryland or yeah, Missouri is also up too. It, yeah. I, yeah, I'm going to mention Missouri in a moment, but I wanted to ask about Maryland. Um, so, I mean, a lot of people speculate that usually they say it's a double or triple what you're seeing on the, um, you know, uh, medical. So that's yeah. kind of what we're thinking. We do, we're poised to double, almost triple our growth. So as soon as that's passed, we will be ready to go because we are selling out all the flour that we have wow. today as well as all of our products. Um, I mean, it's great, but we are now running three shifts to keep up with just the um, the medical. Three. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That yeah. busy very busy. (laughs) Wow. Well, let's touch on Missouri. As you said, the 2022 midterm election ballot includes a question asking voters if they want legal cannabis available for adult recreational use, which was approved by voters back in September. Uh, You, Mary Med, announced that its award winning portfolio of cannabis infused edible had officially entered in to uh, the Missouri market. So what sort of impact, uh, I guess, does this affirmative ballot vote impact Uh, the company's top line in uh, the state of Missouri? Yeah, I mean, for us, we haven't been in Missouri. So, you know, medical was passed there in 2018 and, you know, it got traction a little bit sooner. Um, And so there's about 200 dispensaries. So at this point, we thought it was best not to go the dispensary route. Mm -hmm. And so we announced that we will be doing, um, you know, our processing. We won't be growing. Um, So we're focused on, you know, doing a processing facility and we're going to bring all of our branded products, the Bettys, the Bubbies, the Vivations, et cetera. And then depending on if it adult use passes, we might you know, um, entertain doing a dispensary or two. We do have folks that we are close to you know, the dispensaries and what's going on, but you know, we kind of want to see what shakes out from this um, you know, election and, and, and balance yeah. of all these uh, states to see what we're going to do next. Last thing I'll leave, if you want to share to your audience of investors or people that are learning more about your story, I have to ask, what should three things that make MeriMed uh, to get excited about? Well, I mean, I, I think, you know, we had a very strong balance sheet for sure. So we had cash o- over, you know, $11 million this past quarter. Um, we have very little debt. Uh, we continue to have, you know, quarter over quarter improved financial perspective performance, both on the revenue, gross margins, and and the bottom line. Um, I think the thing to watch is really to see, you know, our goal is to be from, you know, seed to sale. And so in the states that we're in, we have done that, and we're looking to expand the footprint. So where we are in Illinois for dispensaries, we'd like to get to the maximum of 10. In Maryland, we have one. We would like to get to the full four. And then, um, you know, for sure in Massachusetts, we have one. And so we have two on the ready. One has been announced. Um, so we would like to, before, you know, next year end to be fully um, deployed in all three of those states. I know, you know, we don't want to speculate, but this is what we do in media. Um, <laughs> I have to ask, uh, early signs are showing that it's it's probably going to be a sea of red in the election tomorrow. I don't know if that's going to be accurate or not. But indeed, if that is the case, um, how do you see, I guess, the overall industry performing? You know, we've talked about how the Dems had a great opportunity for two plus years. We haven't really seen much change. And I know a lot of companies like yourselves don't really focus or partake in the uh, election and what's moving, you know, with Washington. But indeed, if there is a change of administration within the House and Senate, um, is there been much talk or anticipation as to how you think the uh, 
and, and other peers within the company as to how they think the uh, industry will perform? Yeah, I mean, it's all speculation at this point. I can certainly tell you what, you know, five different people in the offices next to me, what they think. Yeah. But at this point, we're focused on building, you know, award-winning products, having great, you know, retail dispensaries, and we're going to let it play out how it's going to play out. And so we think we'll be the best performer no matter what um, the elections hold, you know, tomorrow. All business and focus. Appreciate the feedback, right? Absolutely. There you go. Well, listen, tell the team I say hi. Thanks for checking in. Great work, obviously, on the earnings report. And uh, hopefully we see uh, some of your crew down in Vegas for MJ Biz. But I appreciate you checking in. Okay, great. Well, great catching up again. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Susan. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching. So what would you think of the interview? If there's any information that you want to know more of or want to learn about, then provide us with feedback by leaving a comment below. And if you like what we're producing, then feel free to subscribe to our channel, share this video with your network, and as well, click on that bell for all notifications because we would not be here without you. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching, everyone.